AI and the big data research work we have been doing, and also give some of the examples, uh, the example applications. So basically, uh, H3 Hong Kong Applied Science that research technology was established about 20 years ago, and uh, we have like uh, uh, many different research areas, as you can see, from all the way hardware to what's embedded system communications and to like uh, uh, applications. So we have all those different things, like all the ways from IC designs, you know, making the chips and making the embedded systems towards like large scale uh, systems and applications. One of our major focus is really uh, focusing on the applications, like uh, kind of impactful applied research. You know, we want to if enhance the uh, operation efficiencies, client experience, and also like society impact. So specifically uh, in the areas of um, artificial intelligence and big data, we're looking at from all the way theoretical kind of foundations, like how do we actually processing the data? And how do we actually building the next generation computational model? And how do we actually make use of the AI and the machine learnings to really provide a lot of the insights for the kind of applications we're looking at, all those different applications in financial applications, in um, uh, smart manufacturing, smart city, healthcare, learnings, and all that. And also we are very emphasized about the system capabilities, especially like building sensors, embedded systems, uh, networkings, like uh, in terms of uh, how to actually form a network. Sometimes you really have to go about taking all those data. Like those data are not just there, like uh, you know, we can grab from the internet. Sometimes like in many of the applications, like industry applications, uh, healthcare applications, learning applications, we need to put the sensors. Sometimes those sensors are actually embedded system. We have to consider about the batteries, energies, and the networkings, how they form data and all that. So we also have to deal with like sometimes deal with people, like looking at you know, the interactivities, cognitive sides, like in a healthcare senior center, really we want to make sure the, the technologies can be used by the senior citizens and they are not afraid of using that natural interface. And also the system needs to be very robust. And ultimately we're also looking at the ways we can actually uh, uh, pushing that technologies to every you know, different aspects of uh, applications. So we're looking at from all those angles, like uh, from the bottom theoretical foundations, like how to build large scale systems and to address many, many different applications. So our uh, really uh, starting from like application, you know, uh, driven R&Ds. So basically, you know, we have these angles trying to apply it to as much information uh, application as possible. So in terms of like a theoretical foundations, you know, we want to understand what is intelligence, especially like this distributed artificial intelligence, getting data, you know, from multiple parties and more like a, a, a unique uh, person and a sort of like a human centric rather than uh, lots of data from everywhere. So we're looking at various models like how to do like using compressive sensing for instance to do the sense and the computation at the same time. And also other technologies like blockchain uh, distributed ledger technologies such that we can have multiple parties, data, you know, um, putting together on the same system so we can make use of that. And also we are focusing a lot of like uh, application driven big data automation. This is especially true for many of the uh, industry applications. I'm gonna give more of those examples. And th in this case, the data are generated like more from the edge, from like, you know, not like the centralized, you know, from different um, parties. And uh, in that case, you know, we want to have the intelligence processing capabilities also at the edge. So we're looking at lots of issues like uh, how to get the data, which is really the net networking, next generation networking, and how do we actually make use of those uh, uh, different uh, mesh network, uh, uh, cloud network, all those kind of different next generation uh, architectures to make use of that. And also we're focusing on things like IoT and the 3C, uh, which is really about uh, uh, you know, computation, communication, as well as uh, cryptography. Uh, which is somewhat, you know, to protect the data. So we also study at uh, how we actually can do these kind of things at the chip level. And then we're looking at this uh, uh, meaningful interactions, sort of uh, uh, self-aware kind of learning. And this is especially true. We want to design next generation user interface, especially the user interface is not from like cloud. It's probably um, decentralized, peer-to-peer uh, -peer based. So those cases, you know, we're looking at the decentralized user interface or distributed user experience. So we, we have to do a lot of those uh, uh, cross interdisciplinary kind of research and trying to understand in a, in a new paradigm, 
how do we actually combine the computation interactivity as well as the user uh, uh, trustworthiness. And also we, we think this is uh, any kind of intelligence is interdisciplinary. So there's a lot of kind of uh, cross domain collaborations. And also we are trying to build the infrastructure based. So we're actually uh, uh, trying to establish joint labs with uh, local universities as well as overseas universities. And also we are trying to build some of the uh, open platforms uh, with lots of like uh, localized data. For instance, you know, uh, in Hong Kong, there is a multi uh, mixed language. So there's English, Chinese, and even in Chinese, there are Cantonese and Mandarin. So this is, this is a very challenging thing. And the many of the applications, we're not only trying to come up with a platform, we're also collecting a lot of data test base. And uh, these are the things you know, we can establish such that it will be a natural test bed for many of the algorithms and sometimes uh, systems and uh, interactivities. So our idea is actually based on some core strengths, like you know, building a solid software, embedded system, networking solutions, open source uh, systems, and then deal with like, uh, how to collect data and uh, next generation computational model. And, and on top of that, we're trying to deduce the uh, intelligence, which is really for many different applications. And uh, we have this uh, core competence, R&D, uh, different uh, like groups, you know, like some focusing on cognitive science, some focusing on the uh, general cloud computing science. And some are really dealing with the uh, decentralized uh, you know, IoT data analytics. And some are like uh, cyber physics systems, which is both considering the uh, computation as well as the security and the trust. So those are the groups actually work together and uh, in, in order to solve some of the, the hard problems. And uh, I can give some of uh, uh, examples. I won't have enough time to talk about the details on the, uh, the, the theory or the algorithm part, but I can show you some of the uh, uh, recent examples. And we have been deploying the solutions for many interesting applications. So in the case of efficient operation, uh, this is one of the system actually right now in Hong Kong, there are like uh, uh, seven or eight called the virtual bank license, meaning the banks, they can do all the businesses that the regular banks can do, except there will be no uh, branch office. So everything is done over the network, like um, over mobile phone. So eventually a lot of those banking industries they rely on things like a chatbot, uh, automated system backend processing, all that. So one of the chatbot we are dealing with is obviously a mixed language processing, English and Chinese, and also with some sentiment. And we want to make sure it's like, you know, when the, the user is calling up using a chatbot, uh, whenever you know, the chatbot is not smart enough to handle some of the questions, and uh, it's, it's time you, you roll out to some live person. And uh, the, how to actually do this very accurately is a challenge. So behind it is many uh, you know, agents, intelligent agents are processing those things. And another application is uh, for financial applications is, is uh, uh, OCR, optical character recognition. There are still like many forms, especially those forms are stored in the, uh, the backend, the legacy systems. So actually this is one of the applications, the, the system, the computer is performing better than the hu live human person. So this is actually to detect the address and sometimes in these forms to detect those uh, characters such that the banks are actually processing. So in the front end, actually, uh, you're talking to the customer and uh, maybe automatically filling some of the forms. Some of those forms are actually opinion. Some of those forms actually providing some services. And then back end, uh, this uh, uh, system is processing those forms automatically. So this is a very important one uh, pieces of uh, modules and uh, actually it's part of those uh, FinTech solutions. And also it's very important for security. So this is uh, like authentications. This is using uh, blockchain uh, with automatic uh, EKYC, know your customer. And this is actually uh, uh, breaking the boundary of uh, different uh, banks. So this is actually, uh, there are five banks, big ones, and uh, they actually can share some knowledge, common knowledge uh, of the same customer. Sometimes you know, they have multiple banks or banks with some telecom operators. So basically the phone numbers, for instance, sometimes can be some of the uh, identities for that person. And uh, in order to protect the uh, customer privacy, and at the same time you want to verify this is the right customer. So this uh, blockchain is used. And this is actually uh, extend not only for the banking industries, but also for other like uh, logistics, uh, supply chains, for instance, manufacturers, property tech, insurance, payment, all that. So this is getting like uh, integrated with many different components. 
And this application is an interesting one so about uh, better securities and uh, analytics with uh, machine learning on quality live video. So this is actually automatically detect uh, regions of interest. So if you have a re high resolution video camera capturing a lot of video, and only some part of that is more important in terms of trying to track a customer or trying to identify what kind of ac actions are going on. So this is actually to reduce the overall data rate, but also to keep the key information in that video. And this is uh, another very interesting application, which is, uh, you know, we call that, um, it's a spectrometer. Basically, you install this on your mobile phone, and then you can take a picture. It automatically can detect whether or not the food is already rotten, it's not suitable to eat, or sometimes to detect uh, if a, a, a diamond is, is a real one or not. Uh, some of the, uh, you know, uh, of these applications depends on like whether or not to identify the real food, but sometimes also about the securities. And this is something like a, a combination of, uh, uh, you know, um, sensor technologies with um, signal processing, as well as some backend database with a lot of knowledge about the products, the, uh, the, the objects to identify. And this is applications in the manufacturing floor, which is uh, scheduling. And uh, basically in the large manufacturing floor, there are many like AGV automatic vehicles. And uh, we are trying to install these systems in the uh, really large auto manufacturers. There are over 500 of those AGVs. They are working around. And actually you want to avoid the hitting the people. Sometimes you want to avoid hitting each other. And still you want to keep the speed. So there's a lot of challenge problems. And if you have a size of a couple hundreds of those auto vehicles, and the, the, the optimization problem is a very hard problem. Uh, you cannot send in the message back to the servers to doing the coordination. So this is a typical case, peer-to-peer -peer based. Basically, you know, once you configure the whole system, and then you let each agent to run its own course. So they will have to fulfill their task, given task, go into certain places to pick up certain components, yet at the same time to avoid the, you know, collisions, avoid running into people and all that. So again, this is a very challenging problem but also it requires a lot of those optimizations, automatic scheduling and planning, all that. And the second category we are actually putting a lot of efforts in terms of application is a better client experience. These are like uh, med many of the Medica Medicare healthcare applications. So this is one of the uh, uh, capsule we have uh, manufactured, which is really taking a, a pictures of your, uh, you don't have to actually open up your belly, but actually you can just uh, almost like take a pill and then it runs through your whole uh, circulation system, uh, taking pictures and sending those pictures, high resolution pictures back. And then you can do those image analysis, trying to figure out whether or not there's some abnormals like inside your uh, system. So this is actually uh, one of the, uh, uh, it's actually quite easy to use and this is just one time. So you can just throw away once it's, uh, uh, it's used. A similar application is for like uh, sending images, trying to detect uh, uh, this is for like uh, uh, cervical abnormalities. So this is actually uh, a signal processing, image processing, and based on the, uh, some export systems, understanding what are some of the abnormalities and trying to detect and uh, provide the help. So this is to reduce the total number of time for the radiologist to diagnosis from like 20, 30 minutes each slide to something like uh, under like 30 seconds. And of course, you know, this is uh, something to rely on a lot of expertise from radiologists and all that. But we build this system with the main knowledge as well as, you know, this image processing, pattern recognition, and the machine learning tools inside this. And of course, the similar things, we also apply it for the uh, uh, smart investment. So in this system, this is something like uh, uh, machine learning uh, plus financial big data. Uh, so basically, we're taking information from the uh, uh, stock exchange and actually can compose this uh, algorithm automatically trading. So decide when to enter the market, when to sell. So you can specify a few uh, things like you know, when to buy some stocks and when to sell. And then this whole uh, system automatically doing these things for you. And there are many tools for you to, to actually design uh, algos, so so-called algo traders. And uh, this based on many of the technical indicators, again, you know, this is leverage on some of the uh, uh, deep learnings as well as some of the uh, machine learning techniques. So you can actually design your own uh, traders. And also uh, because if you trade and if you specify your goal, we can really personalize an investment analyst. So this is based on multiple informations, multi-modal information about the investor. And we take all those information and come up with a system personalized for your own uh, investment horizon. 
And this is again, you know, using this uh, uh, open source and um, trying to doing this uh, uh, AI and big data analytics for actionable insights for many like uh, regu reg regulatory technologies for smart manufacturing and for various different uh, applications. And the final area is like a meaningful society impact. We have been doing this actually uh, for many different vertical applications. For instance, in the smart water, we're putting those uh, sensors all over like Hong Kong in the open space and the mountains, you know, those, those areas without any uh, telecommunication facilities and also there's no power. So those sensors are, are putting there, uh, like detect whether or not some reservoir is, uh, is, is gonna get flooded. And sometimes if there's an emergency fire and all that information, so it's covering the whole Hong Kong and we're actually uh, putting those in the household as well. So the, uh, the water meter, we actually, uh, in the household, we'll be able to send the usage sometimes, you know, uh, those sensor data will give us enough information we can detect whether or not there is a burst in the pipe in the water distribution system. So a lot of those uh, depends on the, the main knowledge we have of fluid dynamics and the information and also the big data we collect. And also, again, we all know like auto driving. So in Hong Kong, we also have the first license to actually try to using 5G and uh, V2X technologies to actually uh, help drivers to na navigate through uh, uh, Hong Kong's uh, uh, um, streets. And this is actually AI for like uh, driving safety. And we take information from multimodals like images, sound, and also your biometrics information to make sure like you are in a good state, not actually in a, you know, like a, a not safe driving status. So a combination of risk detections and avoidance. And this is for like e-government. And healthcare is also, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we installed many of those uh, like test beds so we're putting sensors in the senior center house, actually in the bed, in the restroom, in the living room. So we, ha we are able to collect many of those data so we can have a, a very tailor-made for that specific senior citizen and make sure you know, his or her medical condition is met. And one step further, we're also making those, uh, we call that uh, a senior elderly um, companion. This is some toy type of things, actually have multiple sensors so they can collect many data from senior citizens. And also we have this multimedia kind of interface. So you can talk to the doll or the, uh, or the toy and actually they can come in back and talk back to you and sending a lot of information back and forth with your family members or actually uh, Medi Medi Medicare staff. And these are the wearable electronic device we make actually can sort of help you uh, actually, you know, to collect uh, sometimes, you know, variables, informations, and uh, sometimes, you know, there's a Chinese medicine called acupuncture. And we actually, uh, some of those device variables, uh, wristband or, or, or some wearable clothes, it actually gonna simulate this kind of uh, acupuncture's physical kind of touch and the stimulation pattern and trying to achieve similar kind of uh, results. And then there's like e-learning things, you know, we have been doing collecting, you know, data in the classrooms and off classrooms and trying to have better tailor-made kind of a smart educational system. Because of time, you know, I'm gonna actually jump to, uh, you know, so basically what we do is actually uh, collaborations, you know, with uh, uh, a lot of industry trying to deploy technologies in AI, big data to solve many of the application problems. And uh, this is actually, H3 is running by both uh, industry contributions as well as public funding. So many of the uh, uh, research programs we are doing, actually we get um, sometimes 90% of funding from public uh, grant. So uh, it's exactly Hong Kong, you, you welcome you know, this kind of collaborations. So, um, and that's, uh, that's all. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs>